here's the other thing that I think is in play here um, to a certain degree. And we are such a society, not of disagreeing unkindly. We are such a society of what have you done for me lately? And you know what Brock Purdy has done for everybody lately? Not, not even thing. not even play. <laughs> right. And that has a lot to do with the opinions that I hear building. Orlovsky this morning. Who are the five scariest quarterbacks left? Baker Mayfield was number four. Brock Purdy's not even on the list. Fine. If Baker Mayfield scares you, knock yourself out. Be scared. But I think that's got a lot to do with it. It's got a lot to do with what we think about the Packers. I want to be very, very clear here. I'm not, first of all, I'm not on the team. I, I am a very big 49er fan, but I'm not going to peacock into this game and act like it's not possible that the Packers win. Sure. It's a playoff sure. game. It is completely possible that the Green Bay Packers win. I don't think they will. And the point I was trying to make earlier when I said many of you think what you think about Jordan Love solely because of last week, it tucks into what you're hearing about Purdy right now as well. Jordan Love scored 48 points on national TV at Jerry's World last weekend. Purdy ate chips, and it wasn't broadcast to anybody. And, and, and I think that is really starting to shade people's opinions. People's opinions in the playoffs get shaped by what we just saw. Look at what we're doing now with Baker Mayfield, whether it's Amy or Dan Orlovsky or anywhere else. Now suddenly, because... The Bucs scored 32 points against the worst defense in the NFL, be honest. Now we've decided Baker Mayfield's good. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to forget everything else that I saw leading up to these moments. They're dangerous. They're good. That's why they're here. But now Jordan Love and Baker Mayfield's bleep don't stink because they won playoff games last weekend? I'm sorry. I'm out on that idea. I remember yeah. what Brock Purdy did this year, and it was way better than Baker Mayfield, sure. and it was better than Jordan Love, and it was better than almost every quarterback who played. Different things, I think, in terms of Jordan Love and Baker Mayfield, and you have had a hard time warming to Baker Mayfield this year being a good quarterback. He had a good year. He had a good year. He has and not it, had a good career. No, and if you look at his numbers, he's had good years, and he's had good years for mediocre teams, and he's had he's had good years in the past. His last year in Cleveland was a good year. They weren't as good, and this year in Tampa was kind of a slow build, and it turned out he had a good year. <laughs> Baker Mayfield is Andrew Wiggins. He's the number one overall pick in the draft, and he has largely been disappointing and frustrating for the majority of his career, but he has moments where he shows up and you go, oh, Oh, right, you have talent. It's the same guy. It's the same guy. One of them has commercials, so we don't yell at him that he doesn't care because he cares too much. He gets into police chases with people, in fact. Um, that was a few years ago. Yeah, it's the same career, though. Different player. Of I, I would say the career is different in well, that Baker Mayfield is trending toward being good again, and Andrew Wiggins is trending toward being bad again. Trending. Andrew Wiggins went from... You're the number one overall in Minnesota, and he was mediocre. Then he won a championship, and now he's back to being Minnesota Wiggins, if not worse than Minnesota Wiggins. I, Baker Mayfield is playing his best football of his career, and he's got a playoff win. Now. I don't. I don't disagree. Wiggins is a champion. Baker has sure. not even come close to proving anything near that, and won't this year either. A lot tougher to be a championship-winning quarterback than it is to be no a doubt. member of an NBA champion. No doubt. All, all the, the line I'm drawing is the fact that both were the number one overall pick. I get it, yeah. Both have been kicked out by the team that drafted them. Both have been a lot more disappointing than impressive, but both are really good athletes who at times will impress you. That's the comparison I'm drawing. Yeah. That's all. Baker on his third team. Yeah, and... different, different sport, different. Actually, Baker's on his fourth team. Remember the Rams. Yeah. Rams, oh, yeah, Carolina yeah. in there, Browns, too. Browns, Carolina, Rams That's on his right. fourth team already. Yeah. So, yeah. First time over 4,000 yards. Yeah. And, you know, you look at his last year, or actually his third year in Cleveland, he had a good year, and they were good. And this year, he's been better. Career high in yards, and he's been a guy that has been – you know, thought about as comeback player of the year in terms of what he's, he he's come back it. from being not very it. good. Yeah. He had a great year. And Jordan Love, I think, is more 
of a product of the second half of the year as opposed to four quarters in Dallas, but that's my opinion. And, you know, I haven't watched every snap of Green Bay, but I've watched the Packers get better, and I've watched him get better over the second half of the year through red zone and watching their games as much as I could. And so for me, it's more than just, wow, they beat Dallas. Who is this guy? Jordan who? And discovering that Jordan Love is good over the course of four quarters against Dallas. No, I don't disagree with that either. Yeah, he 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 he's very good. Like his numbers speak for themselves. But uh, everybody went and forgot about Purdy. Apparently, maybe not everybody, but there are a lot of opinions out there that have now decided the same damn thing that we spent all year dispelling, which is that the quarterback position is some sort of a weakness for the 49ers. Right. Some sort of a spot where boy. Like, gosh, I love them in every spot, but oof, the quarterback, he's the, he's definitely the eighth of the eight that are out there. When you're talking about certain teams, Baker Mayfield, who is on his fourth team in, in five years, C.J. Stroud, who is a rookie, this is his first experience with playoff games, Jared Goff, who scored three points in the second half of a football game, held on for dear life, and beat a team that got rid of him in order to win a Super Bowl. I mean, let's let's really take all of these resumes into play. I'm not sitting here telling you that Brock Purdy's the best quarterback this weekend. I don't think that. I don't think that. But I do think that what you're hearing from a lot of people now is due to the fact that six of these guys got to play last weekend. So they're right in the back of our mind in terms of right. what they can do. And Brock, the other guy is, Brock hasn't played for the other guy is going to be the MVP. So in, yes. in terms of Correct. what you're saying, six guys played and two of them, Mahomes and Allen, are going head-to-head -head, and they're considered probably the two best in the sport. And we saw Jared Goff and the emotional win in Detroit and Baker was number one overall and CJ is going to be rookie of the year. And so everybody else has this resume. And you're right. All we remember about Brock Purdy, it's not 22 of 28 against Washington in the last game he played. In a really good game, another good game solid, for Brock yep. Purdy. More than solid, 124.7 QB rating. Yep. It was, he was near perfect in that game. What we remember as a nation is four picks on Christmas because we all watched it. It was Christmas night. It was the biggest matchup of the year, the two Titans, Super Bowl preview, and Brock Purdy wasn't very good. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so, but that, that all speaks, I, I'm in full agreement with you. There is a recency bias in terms of what's going on in our discussion about QBs. Uh, I think we arrived at this weekend, and it's the first time where you've got six playoff winners and the two teams that earned their way right. uh, in, in, into not even having to do that last weekend. So these should be teams that are good, that are playing well, and have good quarterbacks. And we've decided that Brock is, is not up to snuff solely because you, you didn't see him last week, you didn't see him the week before that. You saw him in what felt like a sleepy whatever game the week before that. Right. And then there was Christmas, which was terrible. And so that goes back a month. Right. And apparently erases weeks one through 16. Well, just in, how about the, the six weeks before Christmas yeah. where they won six in a row? He was incredible. I mean, forget weeks one through six where you rattle off five in a row. Then you had the losing streak. Then you had the bye, but you came out of the bye and you won six in a row. So... It feels to me, Mark, like it's the same old narrative over and over. And I was just thinking as you were talking about any of the year where you had the two teams that get the bye, and we've never, ever in that time thought about, well, those teams have a bad quarterback. It's very rare that you no. look at the teams who get the bye and you think, well, they're doing it despite their quarterback, which th this team is not doing that. But that's what many people want you to believe. You know, Jordan Love has won seven of his last nine, Dibs. Yeah, he's been hot. You know who else has? Brock Purdy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and one of those uh, losses wasn't his. Uh, well, he's no, actually won you, seven of eight. If you, Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Uh, it depends on how far also you want to go back. Also seven of nine and seven of ten and seven, seven of eleven. Seven of eleven, exactly. <laughs> so we can play let's, that game. Let's go to Art in Oakland on Withering Dibs. Hi, Art. What are you doing? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Um, I... I played uh, both wide receiver and quarterback. I'm 87 now and played basketball up to the age of 83. Uh, I, I When I first saw Brock Purdy, I was knocked out 
he did things, uh, two things that he did that the other quarterbacks couldn't do was throw the ball east and west to make someone making a cross field pattern. He threw it so they never broke stride in catching the ball, while the other players always threw on the back hip or behind the players. Also, I thought uh, his, uh, he's unbelievable against pressure. He evades per- pursuit, throws perfect dimes with the defense in his face, throws at odd angles beautifully. Uh, a couple of his throws look like he just threw it away, and it comes right perfectly into Ayuk's hands with a defender on him tightly for a touchdown. Uh, he stays calm. He's got a crazy fast wind-up throw uh, that's very, very quick. It doesn't give away where he's going to throw the ball because it's so quick. And he takes everybody off the, off the uh off the ball by looking them off. His defenders, he looks them off the ball. That's why a lot of times they're just not in position. Our great stuff. Appreciate you so much. You've been watching football for years, and you know that no one's ever done it better than Brock. Yeah, you can throw it east to west, <laughs> north and south. Yeah, he's great. Northwest and southwest are a little tough for him, but directionally he's accurate. Get your compass ready. Saturday night is almost here.